Welcome to Look Behind the Look, the celebrated podcast that explores your favorite looks in film, television, and fashion history. Through conversations with the fashion world's elite and award-winning hair, makeup, and costume designers on sets around the world, you will see and hear exciting tales from behind the scenes, career origin stories, and tons of advice and tips. I'm your host, Tiffany Bartok. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Look Behind the Look. We're talking to another group of Emmy-nominated artists today. We are talking to Stacey Morris and Nina Ross Davis of Blackish. And this episode really tried to kill me. I'm telling you, I had so much to learn and so many questions to ask them. And the the thing just kept cutting out. These ladies came out of their busy schedule directly from set. They're like hiding in the dressing room, doing the interview. So it did cut out because of faulty Wi-Fi and whatnot. And uh, Nina's phone kept overheating because she was in the hot, hot California sun on her break, just trying to make it all work. But you know what? We made it all beautiful for you because that's what we do. In this episode, you're going to hear from legendary hairstylist and barber Stacey Morris. She's the personal barber for Anthony Anderson since the beginning of his career and the beginning of Blackish. She's also the barber for Marcus Schreiber, Miles Brown, Dion Cole, Lawrence Fishburne, all of them on the show, which is what we talk about today. But Stacey's worked with all of your favorites personally. Eddie Murphy, Will Smith, Lil Nas X, Anthony Mackie. She is Oscar nominated, six-time Emmy and seven-time Guild Award nominee with two wins. And we're also talking to Nina Ross Davis, who will be talking about her work with Stacey on Blackish this year. Oh, and did I mention that they're both Emmy nominated? Yeah, I think I did, but just to remind you. Nina is also the hair department head for Grownish, celebrity stylist local 706 journeyman, and twice an Emmy nominated for Outstanding Hair on ABC's Blackish. So, despite our connection interruptions and whatnot, these ladies have some of the best career advice I have ever heard, and lots of fun tales from set. So let's listen and talk about their extraordinary work right now. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me, Nina and Stacy. Like, let's tell everybody what just happened. We are grabbing you, like, literally from the set. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pre- literally, I- literally on the set, like. Exactly. <laughs> I appreciate I know Nina you jumped out in the middle yes. waiting for your arrival your talent arrival and yes you guys are busy 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 and I appreciate right. you taking the time so much to talk to me about this beautiful show that we all know and love an American staple blackish which sadly came I just stupidly rewatched the finale. I don't know why I did that to myself. Just as a refresher, I was watching it. I was like, why did I do choose the finale to watch again? I'm so sad. I know. So I can't imagine what you guys have been going through, but let's talk about it. Because as you were saying, Nina, earlier, Stacey, you've been with the show since the pilot, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. I've been there since inception. <laughs> Amazing. And, and, and so you're Anthony's personal... Yeah, I'm Anthony's personal, but um, on the show, I basically took care of the guys, like uh, the male cast, you know, so that was me. I've been knowing and doing Anthony since he came back from Howard University back in the day. <laughs> Is that Tell true? Tell how long, Stacey, don't be bashful. It'll be like 25 <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah, stop telling my age. Um, okay. <laughs> no, but yeah, when he came back from Howard, you know, there was a little circle of friends here in LA that kind of, you know, hung out with each other and we met and I was like, you need to let me cut your hair. And I oh. started cutting his hair and I've been doing him ever since I've been through it all with him. Oh my God. So are we talking law and order or like, I mean, we're talking about what hit the beginning since oh, you ever it. saw him like because he went he went to college and he came back oh. and you know what well, I mean we had to be god uh, you know what 19 20 oh. 20 uh, around then is when we kind of started hanging out with each other and I was doing his hair and um you know I've been through the whole journey to blackish <laughs> amazing amazing and it's funny because when when he was doing blackish and he said hey i might have this show we're gonna do this show i want you have to be with me and at the time i think there was scandal with, okay uh, 
yeah, and it was like, so who are you gonna do? You gonna do scandal? You gonna do blackish? You know, ah. and so they <laughs> they were actually uh, fighting with with each other over me, which was kind of fun. <laughs> and oh she yes, did blackish, and then I went over to scandal. That's so funny. I was over yeah. to scandal for some years over there mm-hmm. with the crew. Oh I'm my sorry. god! Yeah. Oh my so god! We've just been all over the place. It's been a great journey, you know. Yeah. Yes. It's a great journey. And then I arrived on uh, season seven and eight. Um, you know, for the finale. So it was, I'm just happy and blessed to be a part of the Blackish family and franchise, you know? And, you know, when I got there, everybody just welcomed me with open arms and, you know, they grew to love me. And, and it, we just been a, just a, a great family, you know? Blackish mm, is family. Yes, that's very clear. It's such a staple yeah. in all of our families, for sure. And I don't know yeah. what we're going to do without it. What do you think is going to happen? There's, it's irreplaceable. There's nothing <laughs> nothing that it's can irre- take its place. Yeah, it's, it's irreplaceable. But, you know, I've had the experience of being on shows, you know, like this. Mm-hmm. And it just, it never goes away. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Like, yeah. I, I did Fresh Prince. You know, I did Martin Lawrence. And it, it reminded me of that. And it was uh, funny having this consciousness because back then we didn't know what we were creating. We didn't mm-hmm. know what we were in. We didn't really realize until now we still talk about it. And we're like, man, you know, those experiences and, and, and the things that it meant at that time to people and the watchers and the viewers and all of that, we didn't realize. But be, a, after having that experience and now feeling that nostalgic feeling again with Blackish, I'm like, a lot of people don't realize what has happened here for, mm. you know, the show, the actors, just the timing, you know, just everything. And in years to come, 20, 10, 15, we'll be talking about Blackish. Yes. Just like with yeah. the other shows that you mentioned. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. But I so- have a different perspective, you know, and I can actually see that. I know it already because I've had you've been through it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you guys deal with a family and with every family, it evolves, you know, everybody's styles evolving all the time. And so I'm curious to ask you, do the actors come to you with a new, like, let's do something different this year. Or let's do something different this time. Or do you approach them with that? Or how do you, these looks this year were really different and, and really evolved and like really expressive. So how, who Thank decides you. that? Yeah, they're beautiful. For, for me, um, it was it was both mm-hmm. um, like Marseille Martin, you know, she's evolved into a young, yes. young lady. You know, she started the show when she was, you know, nine or 10 years old. And now, you know, she's a, a teenager, you know. Mm-hmm. So for us, it was both like sometimes I would come with her with looks like I had come with the mood board with different styles and things like that. And, uh, you know, she'll pick you know, from those styles. And I said, hey, let's do, you know, this style, you know, or let's do some, you know, braids. Let's do a fishtail braid. Let's add some some rhinestones and some jewels in your hair this time. And so we'll, you know, um, we'll just pick from there. And then other times she'll come and say, hey, let's try this, you know. Um, it was so funny because, you know, the young kids now, they're all on TikTok and YouTube yes. and things like that. And she came with this one style and she mm-hmm. said, hey, let's do, you know, some buns on top with with hearts. So there's a style that I did with like two buns and then it's like hearts on each side and, you know, it's the hair is down or whatever. So that was like very creative and fun. So it's a mixture of everything and and the same with Tracy um this season I had Charlena Allen on the team and she took care of Tracy so um most of the time we just you know work with her natural texture hair but then sometimes we add hair and she'll come and she'll say hey I want you know this braid look I saw you know or I want this or let's try that you know we just kind of come together Mm -hmm. um and decide what we want to do for the looks you know and it was definitely different this season because we know we we knew we had to go out you know with something just amazing and fantastic you know for the finale of the show I sense that like you guys were like we're gonna do it like let's do yes 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 and then even with Marseille like I said you know we did more and and also Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to say, and also uh, a lot of stuff was influenced by the time that we're in, you know, the current yes. uh, time with like the pandemic and things like that. 
Um, another thing uh, kind of different, it was different now than before is when we first started the show, of course, we're establishing what their look is going to be, what the brand is going to be as far mm-hmm. as hair and, and mm-hmm. telling the hair story. And there was a lot of involvement from uh, not only the actors, but myself and the the uh, producers, Kenya Barris. He was very involved in their hair and what they looked like and what he wanted them, how they looked, how to make people feel and the stories that it would tell and how it would portray, you know, different things. So that kind of, as we evolved, um, got a little looser, which was fun because now we knew, oh, you know, this is that family. We know what they look like. And we kind of could let their own personality shine through in their hairstyles. And which was really cool because as they got older, you know, kids start wanting different things and what their parents tell them they should get. Yes. And yeah, so we got to do that. It was like, well, Marcus, what do you want? Oh, I want to grow my hair longer. You know, I want to twist my hair up. Hey, what do you guys think about that? You know, I take it to the director or producer and they're like, ah, that'll work. And sometimes on hiatus, we would try things because it's funny. They always want to be really different from their character. You know, ah, so, okay. <laughs> yeah. So during hiatus, we would try things and then we come back for the season and they'd be like, I like that. That works, you know, okay. and so it would become a part of their uh, character at the finale. Um, after we finished shooting the last episode, which actually we shot out of order, you know, um, I came to set and we actually cut Marcus's hair off, like cut it all off. Like we actually ended it, got rid of that character and oh, cut no. all his hair off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. And if you watch the shows, you'll see the evolution, like especially with like Anthony, his hair grew longer. We went through a couple of different looks and twisting and his beard got bigger. And that is indigenous of the time. Beards are very prevalent, you mm-hmm. know, and, and it's a part of like every every culture now. There's like a beard culture. You know, yeah, what's so that you, about? What is that? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a whole, I mean, to me, it's very defiant. If you think uh-huh. about it, back in the day, it was like, oh, if you're not clean shaven, yes. you know, you have to represent this certain type of look. Right. It, it, it defines the type of person you are, whatever. Now, you know, everybody has a beard. Yes. <laughs> you know? yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, yeah. do you, you work on, you're going to work on grown too, or? I am. Well, yeah, yeah. actually we, we were supposed to finish last week, Okay. but we had a little COVID hiccup. So we had to work this week. Yeah. But we're finished after this week. And that was really fun. Um, Mark brought, brought me over. Right. Uh, to, to grown And so I came over there with him and then I started doing the other character, Trevor and, yeah, it's fun. It's I'm I'm in the I can't get out of the ish universe. No, no, nobody <laughs> yeah. wants to let yeah. you go. Are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I love it because it kind of made it easier, you know, with the ending of Blackish. You know, mm-hmm. it was just like, oh, it's over. But then it was like, okay, well now here's Grownish. You know, <laughs> of course. What it, can yeah. I ask you? What? Oh, let's see if we can find. Let's see if we can find Nina. Oh, there she is. Okay. I'm back. Yes. Hey, girl. Um, we were just talking about Marcus. He did. Yes. Um, we were talking about Marcus and how mm-hmm. Stacy went over to Grownish. Um, yes. You know, so it helped with the evolution mm-hmm. a little bit to stay yeah. in the ish mm-hmm. world. Right. Mm-hmm. And then I did. I also did two seasons of Grownish. Uh, season okay. Four and five. So it was kind of like I was bouncing back and forth. We did Blackish. Mm-hmm. Then that, when that wrapped, I went to Grownish. Then came back, back, back. You know. And then now Stacy, you know, went over there as well. So she got to, ex- you know. Like you said, it just made it easier, you know, for the journey to end because it kind like of like picked course. up somewhere else. Yeah. 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 Can mm-hmm. I ask you something not about not about your skill set so much, but just mm-hmm. about you emotionally? Like, can I ask you about the the ending? Because we talked about it as a family a lot. And like, what did you think of the move? What did that mean to you of them moving? Spoiler the- alert. Spoiler alert. Right. <laughs> <laughs> out. Um. It reminded me of the uh, uh, what show was that back in the day? Uh, is it the Moving On Up? That one. Oh, the Jeffersons. 
the yeah, Jefferson's. Yeah, it was kind of like, you know what I'm saying? They're, mm -hmm. they're elevating. They're graduating. Yeah. You know, it was mm -hmm. just transformation. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was, it, it was bittersweet. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then just yeah. going back to their roots so their son could grow up in an environment that, you know, he can relate to, you know, and the family mm -hmm. can be around people that they can relate to because they've been going through all of these blackish problems, issues, and situations. So just to be able to have a sense of relief and calm and come back to where they, you know, where they were rooted from. That's what unconditional. Yeah. yeah unconditional, you know, so it was bittersweet. It was, I mean, it was a lot of tears, you know, that last I can't day. imagine. It was, yeah. it was just a lot of emotions. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was pretty amazing. And actually for the finale, I know you watched it when they were doing the, uh, out uh the parade out in yes. the street out yeah, that everybody so all, everybody all, was invited all in the of those scene. People, yeah everybody from the whole team the whole from the hair crew. the makeup wardrobe the whole crew that was all mm. the crew and I was in there as well you can probably see a sneak peek of me in there as well mm -hmm. so that was kind of like you know really nice to be included in the yeah. season finale you know so we were all there cheering and, and, and partying to you know and celebrating the end, you know, of the season together. So it was, it was just really, it was really nice. And that just gave me it chills. It was emotional. Yeah, emotional. Oh you know, my gosh. We grew as a I, family, you know? Yes, of course. And it, it just seals that whole vibe. You can tell on the screen when you look at everybody's face that like that everybody's together. You know what I mean? It yes. makes, makes the hurt mm -hmm. a little bit easier. A big <laughs> family, you, know? you guys had a lot of amazing guest stars this season. Like what was that like having yeah. Michelle Obama and Simone Biles on set? Like what was that? Now, M Michelle Obama was, oh my God, she is the nicest <laughs> Down That's the best earth. first lady ever. Oh. The best first lady ever. Like, I, you know, never in my wildest dreams, you know, mm. imagine meeting a first lady, you know. Right? Uh, and, and to be able to meet a first lady and a woman of color, you yes. know, so I'm looking at a reflection of myself. And then for her to be so, oh my God, I don't even, the words can't ex explain just like, how nice she was. She yeah. sat on set during taping. Like when we mm -hmm. cut, you know, for the 20 minutes, 30 minutes, she sat there and she talked with everyone. Oh my god. You gosh. know, and you know, we got to learn more about her. She got to learn about us. And she was just, she was amazing. She it was just a, an amazing opportunity that I will never be able to forget, never forget. She was so natural in her performance too. You know how sometimes you get like um, a sports person to come on and you can tell mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. I mean, it, but I, I wasn't right. like taken out of it at all. I she's, was just like, yeah. she's so um, real. Yes. She's just yeah. real. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What do you prefer? I see. I know you work on features and shows like which one do you prefer to work on? You know, do you, do you enjoy one over the other or is it all the same to you? It's, um, I don't know. I have my moments. Mm -hmm. I think I was cut out for this industry because anything sedentary is not for me. Okay. And like in our careers, we're always moving around, always doing something different, working on, you know, this, that, all different kinds of content and material. Um, I love television, you know, because you, you, you know what it is, you know how the shooting schedules go, you know how your weeks go, you know what the season is, you know what I'm saying? But then sometimes it can get a little monotonous, Okay. you know, <laughs> you know, and I do love doing films. Um, you know, you might do a film for two, three months, some go longer, and then you're done and you take a break and you breathe and you pick up your next project. Right now, personally, I am uh, a little bit burnt out with television <laughs> because I've been doing, you know, we did, yeah. I did blackish eight seasons straight, eight seasons straight, you know, and then I'm still going and I'm actually out of here tomorrow. I'm getting on a plane and I'm gone. Let me but... tell you, this, <laughs> this is the hardest. Stacy is the hardest working lady in showbiz. She oh. goes from show to show and she cuts everybody and she'll be over here doing Anthony and over here doing Eddie Murphy and then she, she, you know, she just got a lot of things on the plane, on the yeah. helicopter with little Nas X. Like she sent me, uh, she is the hardest working woman in show business, and I'm so I happy. I want to do it all. I have yeah. the opportunity 
It's hard. Uh, you can't say no. Just, to, you know, yeah, but to right, answer your question, I enjoy no. I enjoy both. I really do. And it's, sure. you can't really compare them. It's almost like, what do you like better, L.A. or New York? Well, how do you com- compare this sunshine to New York? Right. And how do you compare the vibe of New York to California? Right. Like, right. there's things that you like about both. You know sure. what I mean? It just yeah. depends on what you're feeling at the moment. Sure. Right. And, sure. For, and, for, and for me, um, I have been in the television world for, for so long. Um, it's kind of like Stacy said, you kind of know what you're what you're doing. You know what your day is going to look like. You know what your week is going to look like. Most of the television shows I've worked on have kind of been at a studio. Um, sometimes with a lot with movies, you kind of move around You're three days here, five days there. You know, you're, yeah. you're moving all around town. So week to week, you're in the canyons, you're here, you're there. Yeah. You know? um, but um, I like Stacy. I like the versatility. I like being on the studio lots and stuff. But then sometimes it's great to get out, see the sunshine, see mm-hmm. the different areas where you know you can just relax and sit outside in the lawn chair and just in, yeah, enjoy location. the scenery, the mountains, a, a location yeah. shoot. So except you know, for when it's in the dead of a dead of winter somewhere. <laughs> right, right. We have some crazy locations sometimes. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. it's it's both, you know, because it's still we're still with the actors doing our thing, and it's uh, you know I love them both. You know, I'll take. I'm not gonna turn down a job because it's a movie mm-hmm. as opposed to right. A job. right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. So, it's and all amazing. Stacy, you worked on Dolomite, right? Is that right? Yeah. I love yeah, that movie we so were sure, much. I was, I was short, shortlisted for that mm-hmm. with my partner, Carla Farmer. We uh, co-department headed that together and we actually got shortlisted. So yes, cool. I remember. That was that was one of my favorite movies that mm-hmm. year. Um, it was so, so yeah. I, I feel like nobody really saw it except for like, film snobs you know what i mean <laughs> like i wanted yeah, everybody yeah, 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 to yeah. see it you know yeah. that was a great yeah movie. me too <laughs> yeah it was really good yeah, really good wonderful. i also had the opportunity to day play over there too i was over there a little bit playing okay yeah, yeah so, that seemed you know, like a crazy set yeah crazy. It was, oh, we, had fun, we had a lot yes. of fun yes yeah. Yeah. yes yes i of can wigs. imagine <laughs> Yes, lots of, lots of mm-hmm. Now, would you rather yeah. be in the desert or rather be in the cold? Which of the two? Like, would you rather desert. be on the dune set or give me the dune. the desert? Yeah, like the- I don't want to be. Yeah, give me the heat. Give me the <laughs> me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too for give sure. Me the, I'll take the desert too. You know, okay. like you know, it's a little hot, but I don't like being really cold, rain, and all that stuff, and bundled up. It's just because a lot of times, if you're in the cold, it's because you're working outside and you're doing a scene. That, and you know, you're doing you're outside. hours, hours. Yes. And you're, you're yeah. sitting on and set, waiting. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's through the night, and it's two and three o'clock in the morning, and you're sitting literally outside with heating lamps and big jackets and blankets because it's so cold. Mm-hmm. You know the jackets. So I, oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now, for so you guys are nominated for an Emmy, of course, of course. So this, like, <laughs> how, what's how do you feel about all that? Do you pay attention? Do you go just don't talk about it? Don't leave me alone. I, I don't want to know until the day. Do you just enjoy the parties? How do you how do you deal with all that stress? Um, oh, Stacy, for a I try not to get like too, you know, engaged in what's going on. Um, it's an honor to be nominated. And I just try to, cause you can get sucked in, yes. you know, and, and it, that roller coaster ride. And before you know it, you lost your perception. When we do mm-hmm. the work, that's not what we're thinking about. We're not doing the right. work thinking Emmy, Oh, we got to get this award. We're doing what we love and we're putting in a hundred percent. And so when we get to this mm-hmm. point, I just say, okay, we're going to let it do what it does. The work is done, you know, and there's no, there's nothing else we can do past then, you know, we campaign and do things like that, but I try not to get caught up in, oh, who are we against? And let's see what they Uh did. You know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You you too, Nina. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with Stacey Mm -hmm. on that. Like I said, you know, when we go to work every day, we show up to do our best, you know, and 
once like, once we do that, we leave it all out on the table. You know, we just do our best work every day. And then, you know, like you said, when it gets to this point, we just go through and we have to like literally pick out which episode are we going to do. Oh, you right. Know, yeah. So How, do you you, mm-hmm. How did you select? Well, How did you select the once one? Everything, well, once everything's done, then we get to look at the, the genre of the work, the scope of the whole season. And then we just sit down and we kind of, you know, we kind of go over the episodes or once that once it's all done, we kind of say, you know what? This episode right here would probably be the best one to pick, you know? It's okay. So that's what we do. We collaborate um, about the ep- which episode we're going to do, Stacey and I. We just okay. decide, okay, you know what? We were like, this is the premiere episode. Um, we had, you know, Miss Michelle Obama on the right, episode. Right, we right. had some great hairstyles and some great looks. And so we was like, let's go with this this episode right here, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, Nina, did you I lose you again? Okay. Did you work on the Prince? Yes, I see. Mm -hmm. Did you work on the Prince? I did. That was okay. Uh, uh, No, I did not. It was a previous season. It was a previous season. I can't remember which season it was. Um, I believe the kids were a little bit younger. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm, I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no, I I wasn't, but I did see it, and it was amazing. You know, it's just so many amazing things that have come you know, from this Blackish franchise, you know, just, just seeing, watching the show evolve, it's just been amazing, you know? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's such a, such an important part of television history, of course. And yeah. so, so tell me, do you have any advice for other makeup artists out there who want to like, um, a lot of our listeners are in the industry. They're just starting. Some some have are not mm-hmm. just starting, and maybe they like mm-hmm. want to, you know, have the stability of a show or something like that. Is that something you can try to get, or does it just come into your life? So, like I was saying, advice for anyone that wants to join the local seven hundred six union, you can call them direct, and they can help uh, facilitate how to do it. But just shortly. There's three ways to get in. So you can either do 60, it's called 60, 60, 60. That's 60 days of non-union shows per year for three years within five years. That's the long route. That's the way I went. And it's me almost 15 years to get in. So it's it's all about making wow. connections, meeting people, meeting, go, going out, passing out cards you know, meeting people in the industry, finding people that are doing non-union shows so that you can be a part of those shows. Second way is the 30 days. If you work on a non-union show, I mean, on a union show. So so, what happens is you work on a non-union show and if you work on that 30 days, you can automatically get in. Got it. 30 days, you have to pay your money, big money. And then you can do a star request. So a celebrity, you know, an alias celebrity can request you. You work with them for 30 days or 60 days and you're in. And then there's another thing that they recently added was special skills waiver, where if you had special skills, with natural styling, curling, uh, curly hair texture, styling, braiding, uh, barbering, because um, it's so much work available now in the industry that um Sometimes we're short staff because everybody's booked. And then that's the fourth way to get in, which a lot of people got in uh, over the last couple of years because we were kind of short staff because everybody was booked and busy. But we have the the, the main uh, roster has to be exhausted first. Okay. And then the union will allow someone to become, you know, to work on, for 30 days and get their days and get in like that. So it's very rewarding. And if that's something that you want to do, it's definitely something worth checking. That is so incredibly helpful. I mean, that is like yes. all the information that people are always asking. So I appreciate you breaking yes. it down like that. Yes. Amazing. Yep. And it's just as simple as a phone call. And that's what I did. I ended up just making the phone call, finding out the information and following the journey, you know? But did I hear you say so, it took 15 years? Yeah, you know, just I would say 15 years from the day I knew that I this is what I wanted to do do and then start trying to make those connections. You really got to kind of go out to parties and not, you know, where 
you know, these type of people are product people in production and you just have to make those connections or make the connections with the celebrities, you know, kind of how Stacey did, she, you know, met Anthony, they, they started, you know, working together and, you know, it just flourished for her. So it's, it's all about making industry connections. Yes, yes, yes. Stacy, we know what. <laughs> listen, girl. This is crazy. There's like uh, yeah. something from the upside down from Stranger yeah. Things is like eating all, all our technology today. But we're 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 making it happen. I know. <laughs> You're gonna have a lot of editing to do this one. Right. We're gonna stick with you. I'm gonna have to make a good dinner. You. Make a good dinner for my my husband. <laughs> yeah, they came in here saying That's they were right. gonna do something, and then all of a sudden the Wi-Fi was. <laughs> oh. No, yeah. I, I, I appreciate you hanging on so much. I was just asking uh, Nina about the advice that uh, career advice and, and if you had any yourself about how to get into the business and, you know, one day be like you when, when they grow up. I mean, I always say just like with anything else, attach yourself to like people, like-minded people, uh -huh. people that are doing what you want to do, you know, as much as you can. Some people will say, well, I don't know anybody, but, you know, even if it's through social media, make yourself seen, make your presence seen, you know, create your own lane. Uh, people are always trying to be like mm -hmm. someone else. I get a lot of people that say, hey, I want to do what you do. I want to be like you. And I say, well, if you're trying to be like me, you're always going to be second because I'm the only person who can be me, right? I mean, I'm, so I'm true. The, yeah, I'm the number one me. So you have to be you and be the best that you can be. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's amazing. That's my advice. That's my, you know, top advice always to anyone and just hone your craft. I didn't get here overnight. I've been doing this, you know, for 30 plus years and I just kept at it. And, you know, it, it, there's an intersectional thing like I'm a woman who does mostly guys you know and that was not a thing before right. and I didn't let it stop me I just had to overachieve overperform and make sure that I could not be denied mm -hmm. <laughs> and with that mm -hmm. persistence beats resistance that's mm -hmm. great that's great yeah. yes yeah. oh my gosh these are such gems oh all right, ladies, I'm going to wish you luck on this Emmy campaign. I know, I know you're not mm -hmm. thinking about Thank it, you. but you're thinking about it. Yeah. I wore my uh, ring. This is, we got this for the end of the season. And I oh. thought that was so amazing that they gave us these for season eight. And, it, you know, it says a uh, uh, blackish final season and it's inscribed inside. So We'll have that mm -hmm. forever. And this is going to be my good treasure. luck. That's a treasure. I'm going to wear this and until. Our names, yes. Yeah, our names are inside. I'm going to wear this until we get the Emmy or are at the Emmys or whatever. But the nomination alone, the recognition is, that's everything I could ever ask for. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Yeah. I'm so yes. happy I got to talk to you two today. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it because I know and everyone's going to see how busy you are. <laughs> so... I know, right? We're hanging out in cars, phones, overheating. Like we're getting yeah. back to work after we get out of this, you know. I and know. I just wanted to thank you by for himself, combing his hair. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to thank you too for your show. I love your show. I watched uh, some of the episodes on it. I love it. Thank and, you so um, much. And I thank you for, you know, inviting us on your on your podcast and much yeah, success you. to you with your show because it's like, you know, letting everybody know what what goes on behind the scenes and how it's actually done. You know, you so guys are gonna make me cry. Well. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I, I was telling, I was telling you that I I just keep going no matter what. If I, and so to 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 connect with somebody who is like appreciating it because I just love yes. like telling people how hard everybody thinks it's so glamorous and so yeah. easy and you know like what a life but right. to really show it's, how hard you ladies a, work is is yeah. a gift mm -hmm. it's and i appreciate you so much yes. thank you thank yes. you ladies thank you. Thank you. look behind the look is a vinyl foot production written by me your host tiffany bartok produced by jace bartok edited by nicole tucker if you're interested in learning more find our video version on the youtube channel look behind the look podcast 
There you can see rare photos and clips from our guests. And please follow us on Twitter at LookBehindPod and Instagram at LookBehindTheLook. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe. And tell your friends and spread the word. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or any podcatcher of your choice. Thanks for listening to Look Behind the Look.